Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Seventh Day Church of Revelation. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. We're going to point out three things from this verse. The sun, moon, and stars. You see, back in May 19th, the year 1780, there was a very mysterious occurrence. The sun did not bear its light. There was no eclipse. The sun just did not give its light. And in that same day, the moon turned into blood. Another occurrence happened uh, regards to the falling of the stars. Uh, in the year 1833, it says here, As the night skies exploded and the stars fell on America's deep south, the slavers on one plantation in Tennessee, terrified of the end of the world, attempted to make restitution to those they had enslaved. You might have seen some license plate, I believe it's Alabama. The sun, the moon, and the stars continue to have an impact even for us today. For instance, solar eruptions. Flares could impact Earth, NASA says. Also, Earth hit by large blasts of solar debris from the sun. Sun blasts out powerful X-class solar flare causing radio blackouts on Earth. What else do we see occur? It says here, a giant sunspot exploded on Sunday, July 2nd, creating a powerful solar flare that lashed Earth's atmosphere and caused a radio blackout over parts of the U.S. and the Pacific Ocean. We also know what NASA just did not too long ago. It says here, NASA's jaw-dropping plan to deflect an asteroid this September could leave its target unrecognizable, say scientists. Now this happened in June 29th of 2022. And they did hit their target. Basically a bullseye. NASA crashes spacecraft into asteroid to test Earth's defense as it happened. What else occurred? Well, in this article we see July 24th of this year. It says NASA's mission to collide with asteroids sent swarm of boulders into space. Not only did the test successfully change the trajectory of the orbit, but about 37 boulders were shaking off the asteroid in images captured by the Hubble telescope, NASA said. The boulders range in size from 3 feet to 22 feet across and are drifting away from the asteroid at about half a mile per hour. Every government is trying to save the citizens of an impact of an asteroid, the heat waves, but the Bible tells us that the sun will heat seven times. There are other things that will happen and humanity will not be able to detain, to hold off. I would like to read to you the following vision. In the night I was, I thought, in a room but not in my own house. I was in a city where I knew not and I heard explosion after explosion. I rose up quickly in bed and saw from my window large balls of fire. Jetting out were sparks in the form of arrows and buildings were being consumed. And in a very few minutes the entire block of buildings was falling and the screeching and mournful groans came distinctly to my ears. I cried out in my raised position to learn what was happening, where am I, and where is our family circle. Then I awoke, but I could not tell where I was, for I was in another place than home. I said, O oh Lord, where am I, and what shall I do? It was a voice that spoke, Be not afraid, nothing shall harm you. I was instructed that destruction hath gone forth upon cities. The word of the Lord will be fulfilled. Isaiah 29, 19-24 was repeated. Today many are afraid. 
We see articles, we see news where a meteorite is just going across the skies. People are afraid that an asteroid could hit the Earth. There will be fires, fireballs coming down from heaven. And we don't know the exact time or date that this will occur. But all of this will be judgments. Another activity is about the moon. It says here, a study predicts record flooding in the 2030s, and it's partly because of the moon. We see humanity try to solve these problems, but the Bible has prophesied that all these things are to occur. We also see wars and rumors of war, and the scripture says, For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are but the beginning of sorrows. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end shall not be yet, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. So yes, wars, the activity in the solar system, all that is prophesied. Now let's look a little bit at what's going on in Russia and Ukraine. And very important key players like Turkey. We see that the war has not ended. It's getting worse and worse. People are more worried that we will go into a World War III. The scripture says the following, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech, and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handing swords, Persia, Ethiopia and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togarma, of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. We just read some important names right here. And where is their current localities? According to Genesis chapter 10, these names that we just read all are in the northern part of Israel. And today, Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal, and Gomer, and Magog, they're in the northern part of this country, Israel, which today is Russia. Many people have read the 38th and the 39th chapters of Ezekiel and have wondered and longed to know what those two chapters can mean. What is it to which they refer? And all this time, the first verses of these same chapters of Ezekiel tell definitely what is referred to. What nation of today is meant in those two chapters? Read verses. Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. In the revised version, it runs thus, Son of man, set thy face toward Gog, the land of Magog, the prince of Rush, Meshech, and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And the same connection is found in the third verse, just following, and also in the 39th chapter. Now, we shall not attempt an exposition of these two chapters, we simply point out the meaning of the names that are spoken, that all may plainly see what nation is referred to, and that that nation is Russia.
See, Russia plays an important role for the end times. As it was mentioned, it is appearing in Ezekiel chapter 38. But also in Daniel chapter 11, there are other key players. See, Turkey at one point in 1850 was almost destroyed by Russia. But key countries stopped that from happening. People were worried in 1890s, in the late 1890s, because of the same key players, Russia and Turkey. These two countries are very important for the end time prophecies because it lets us know how soon is the end. And today we see this happening again. Russia and yes, even Turkey is in the news. As we see here in the article, Russia to deploy tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus in July, Putin says. This was back in June 9th of this year. It says Russia will start deploying tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus after special storage facilities are ready on July 7th and 8th, President Vladimir Putin said on Friday. Moscow's first move of such bombs outside Russia since the fall of the Soviet Union. And has this uh, ignited any speculations? Yes. Medvedev says Russia could use nuclear weapons to end war in a matter of days. This was in July the 5th of this year. And what has happened just recently? Russia deploys ICBM that Putin says will make enemies think twice. The head of Russia's Roscosmos Space Agency said Friday that the country has deployed an advanced intercontinental ballistic missile that President Vladimir Putin once said will make Russia's enemies think twice. This happened September the 1st of this year. And what about Turkey? Is it reappearing again in this important role? Yes, it is. Not too long ago, Turkey was opposed to uh, Ukraine uh, being part of NATO. But now it has made changes. It says right here, Turkey's Erdogan says Ukraine deserves NATO membership. Turkey is being playing an important role. It, it is one primary country that has tried to arrange peace between Russia and Ukraine. Now what is going to happen with this news? Russia is not happy. It's not wanting Ukraine to be part of NATO. But when it sees Turkey all of a sudden in favor of Ukraine to be part of NATO, that's not going to be very good in the sights of Vladimir. Another article here says the U.S. is sending cluster bombs to Ukraine despite humanitarian warnings. This was back in July the 7th of this year. Now we know Russia, or Vladimir, does not want any country to be involved between the war of Ukraine and Russia. It says that any assistance uh, or help to Ukraine will be almost like a, an act of war. So this is angering more and more this territory, Russia. Now we see this uh, getting even more, more heated. Uh, F-16 jets expected to arrive in Ukraine by spring 2024, says Resnikov. This was uh, not too long ago, August the 28th. So more countries are getting more involved. They are not listening to what Vladimir has said about supplying more weaponry uh, to Ukraine. But this all has to happen. Prophecy has says that there will be war at the end. There will not be any peace. And all this is pointing that the end is near. We read the following. In the last scenes of this earth's history, war will rage. There will be pestilence, plague, and famine. The waters of the deep will overflow their boundaries. Property and life will be destroyed by fire and flood. This should show us that the souls for whom Christ has died should be fitting up for the mansions Christ has gone to prepare for them. And the Bible says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your 
plunging hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Tither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Russians snitch on Russians who oppose war with Soviet-style denunciations. China's Xi warns Putin not to use nuclear arms in Ukraine. Nobody wants war. Everybody wants peace. But the Bible says there will be war. It's telling them to assemble. See, these countries, these nations that are not wanting to subdue their hearts, to subdue themselves, to do the will of God, there is only one other person who will take control of them, and that is the enemy of God, Satan. He will ignite these nations to go to war, and nobody will stop them because God will let this happen because the end is near. Sin must stop. He does not want to see sin to continue to uh, unfold and to, to get greater just like in the, the days of Sodom and Gomorrah or just before the flood. God hates sin and He wants us to stop sinning. But the heart of man continues to do evil. We read here in this article, rumors of leadership Persian Russian military swirl after alleged detention of top general Surovinkin. And all the kings of the north, just like we just read in Ezekiel 38, the parts of the north, the northern part of Israel, countries like Russia, all of them, Belarus, they will all unite and they will ignite this world war. A war that nobody wants, but the prophecy has said it will occur. Let us continue to read. And all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Sheshach shall drink after them. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye and be drunken, and spew and fall, and rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you, and it shall be, if they refuse to take the cup at thine hand to drink, then shall thou say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, ye shall certainly drink. So even though there are people who are trying to stop this war, they shall certainly drink. And the scripture also says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. They will say there is peace, but all of a sudden there will come destruction. As we just read, nuclear bombs are already placed in positions where all they need to do is receive the order to push that button. Just like 1850, the fear were about Turkey coming to its end. And who was in an important role in that time? Russia. And you could look it up again in 1890s. Russia and Turkey. And today we are seeing this play right before our eyes. This points out to the end. Just before Turkey comes to its end, we need to wake up. We are seeing prophecy being played right before our eyes. And when Turkey comes to its end, probation ends. Let us wake up. 
Let us wake up from this slumber. We need to reason with God that he may cleanse us from our filthy rags, from our sins, and that we can put on the garments of Jesus Christ. Only Christ's righteousness can make us whole again, can guarantee us to go into the heavenly Canaan. If you've been blessed by this video, please like, subscribe, and comment below. To support Seventh-day Church of Revelation, visit revelation.org.